All right. Welcome back to the programming. We're going to begin now. I'd like to call all of your attention up here to the front of the stage, please. Hello, hello. Please wrap up your conversations with your neighbors and your new friends. Shh. Hi, everyone. For those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Liana Sanada Galuli. I have the great honor of working with MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, along with our partners over here at FOMOGenesis. We're so glad to bring you the speaker series. And up next, we have visionary artist Michael Devine, who has been following his creative vision for over 20 years. He's displayed his paintings in festivals and galleries all over the world. And along with his wife, Violet, they've built installations in Deep Playa. Have any of you in this room been foamed yet? Yeah. So Michael and his wife, Violet, built the DJ booth that's in there today. That's it, yeah. So, Michael's also been one of my closest personal friends for about a decade, so it brings me great honor and pleasure to invite Michael Devine to our stage. Please give him a warm welcome. Love you. <clears throat> Hi. There we go. I don't do a lot of talking, so I'm a little nervous, so you know, I'm going to do my best. So, I'm Michael Devine. And I'm going to talk with you some about inspiration. Thanks. And, you know, the will to move forwards in the face of everything, really, and how to sustain that over time, because I think that's what people wonder about the most. We have, like, this spark. And then how do we keep it moving forwards over, over 10 years or 20 years? Is that better? I can't show off Jenny. So anyway. We want to talk about where it comes from and how do we fan those flames and how do we keep it lit? You know, the vision, I mean, and the home fires. Um, you know, art's about sharing experience that data points can't quantify because our human emotions and our human experiences are on this vast spectrum and they're all really personal. And we can have a, a scale, a one to 10 thing of how much joy you felt, but you can't actually describe the joy. And all of these things, joy, grief, fear, loneliness, e ecstasy, they're all part of our human emotions and experiences. And art is this sort of dialogue of these unquantifiable human emotions. And what do I mean by that? Um, so much of our world revolves around stories that are built on intangible experiences. Uh, and those stories we're just sort of making up as we go along. As a visual artist, it, it really does look like I'm making it up as I go along. You know, I'm staring into the void to see what stares back. And, and yet, uh, I am, but the entire system we're in is made up as we go along. You know, cars. Someone made them up. Someone was like, this is going to be better than the wagon, and someone made up a wagon, and so on. You know, and we have money. Like, what's money? No one really knows. We just made that up, too. It's all these stories we keep making up for each other. You know, religions. Also stories told over and over again through time to give meaning to our world. And that's what we're doing all the time, is trying to add layers of meaning to a sort of chaotic world that we live in. I mean, fashion trends. Someone made this stuff up. Donuts were already made up, but a donut dress no one had ever thought of before. Maybe they had, but... This person got on a catwalk. You know, so all these stories are about who we are and why we're here and what we're doing with our time. You know, we have stories like Noah that are about this guy who got all these animals, coyotes and macaws and lions from different continents, put them on a boat and saved them. It doesn't make any sense, but it applied meaning and gave people meaning to the wor their own worlds. Or, you know, you might be think, well, it's the Pleiades. And that, too, is another story, and a story that we use to apply meaning and, and some kind of like reasoning to what we're doing here. So all of the stories aim to bring meaning to the world, whether it's your story or my story or his story or her story. You know, and yet the world defies those meanings. And there's always a new wrinkle to the world. There's always a new part of it that, that we don't understand. And it's this constantly blooming reality that we're living in. Well, it might be a, a matter of which part of the world we want to 
you know, engage in, which part of this made up world we want to engage in. The thing is everybody's making up stories all the time and some for better or for worse, they all have a serious effect on our own lives. So we're trying to intermingle all of these different stories, sometimes forgetting about the emotional content underneath them. Because, you know, it's a vast web and rather than just singular nodes enforcing their will upon the world, each little node is affecting the other node. So where I try to come from in my own work is to engage with all of those stories, you know, as much as I can, whether it's my own story or stories that are really like far and away from my own world and framework, because those people's stories are just as valid as mine because they have these human emotions that are driving the stories. And those, you know, we all feel the same sensations back to the archetypes of experience, we all have grief and fear and joy and sadness. So every culture is just creating a story around that to walk through the world with. And some of those stories, you know, they're built on foundations of fear or separation. And some are built on stories of love and um, openness, you know, and each one is as real as the other. You know, fear is a real feeling and openness is a real feeling. Since the dawn of time, that's an inside joke with my wife and I, so I just put that up there for her. Since the dawn of time, you know, since people started making up stories, since people started trying to add meaning to their lives, the artists have always been there sort of exploring those stories and figuring out where we are in time and space and where we might be going and finding the feelings within those stories. You know, seeing what we can add to this co-created vision of humanity. This is one of my favorite paintings, by the way. Chemical Nuptials, Max Ernst, 1945. Who knows? I like it. Anyways, while it might look like we're making this all up, it's really just, um, it, com it comes out of our heads, you know, independent of the, the warp and woof of reality. It's not just the reflection of the modern world, but this long progression of the development of art. And that development of art that dialogues with everything that's come before it and after it, you know, these, the symbolists and their understandings of spirituality and the futurists and this sort of exploration of the passage of time over in space and the Impressionists, and this exploration of how we understand light and how we interact with it's just the shapes and the forms that we're seeing in our vision, you know, or the Surrealists like Dali, who's like, what does it look like inside? And no one had ever really spent much time looking around inside before, so it was all chaos, you know, no one had spent much time focusing, saying, I want to see the sunrise, like the inner sunrise and what that looks like. You know, and we, we can go back to the Baroque period and, you know, even that was explorations of that, the experience that was happening for people then. All the way back to the Renaissance when people were figuring out how to point, put themselves in space. Like three point perspective happened in the Renaissance as well as this understanding of where the earth was in the solar system. And we started to sort of place ourselves in each one of these movements in each one of these sorts of new layers of it is this new understanding of where we are and how we see ourselves, you know, all the way back to the cave paintings again, where we were just starting to see ourselves. You know, there's horse, I guess, and me. And those are two separate objects and trying to understand what that is because we have these brains, you know, that start thinking about stuff. So, you know, for a long time, art was simply painting the portrait of the king, another landscape, painting another story of the myth. And artists were sort of photographers, you know, uh, in, in some regards. And in the past hundred years, with the advent of the camera, we could start looking around inside and focusing on that inner world and what, what that felt like, just intuitively. And that's when we became, began the sort of more human phenomenon of just really making it up out of ourselves. And, you know, this is only a little over 100 years ago, so it's only about 100 years of really just making shit up as we're going along. Till, you know, now. Oh, man, I just lost my slide. Right. Till now. So today, you know, we can bring our inner world 
out into a clearer focus. We have all kinds of meditation tools and skills and stuff to sort of look around inside and figure that out. And I think we can be really inventive and creative with some of the problems we face today because of this, what, this way that we approach things. We're not beholden to just stories and myths. We're actually looking at things and finding new creative solutions, which we really need to do in order to sort of solve some of the problems we face in humanity. You know, in our modern world, we can just be honest and straightforward with ourselves that as artists, we're just conjuring this up you know, from nothing and from emotions, from feelings and reflections. And even it feels like the deepest part of my soul and the highest expression of all that is, I still don't know why. You know, is it synaptic responses that have some cool reflection and it does a thing for me? Is it more than that? That's really less important than the fact that we're having a dialogue about an experience and finding connection there. And we can measure the data points, but in the end, there's just the sensations. So, you know, there's no need to couch our sensations and myths and allegories or, you know, look outside of ourselves so much. <clears throat> and that gets us to the question that people ask me a lot, which is, where does it come from? You know, um, how do I make this stuff up? And what was I saying? You know, because where it comes from is how do I cut through as much of the story as possible? Because that's the thing, like, I don't want to tell you a story. I want to share emotions and feelings. And I think that if we spend more time with our projects and in the things that we do, trying to explore the emotional content and see how it affects others in that way, rather than just forcing our will onto a thing and saying, this is what the thing is, we might get along easier with each other. So. You know, I want to talk a little about, oh, well, I want to talk a little, what? I have five minutes? I don't want any questions. I'm going to move along quickly. So, you know, molting, this painting's over there. I was having a kind of harsh experience in my world at that time. And uh, we're going to skip this. She's pushing me forward. I was at a fish show, and, and it was the end of David Bowie, and I saw this in my head, and if anybody knows that song, you know it's like intense, you know, it's awesome, and there it was, and, it, and I was like, I have to paint that, and it reflected the feeling, and it was good. Anyway. Anyway, I want to share some of that process with you of, of visualizing those sensations and feelings. And the reason I want to share it is that I think the approach is useful in any walk of life. And, you know, you all have problems and, you know, things you're in puzzles you're trying to explore and struggling with. And so to begin, I want to make something that matters. You know, I want to make something that, that really feels right. And there's so much that, that doesn't matter in this world. There's so much that's pushing our egos and, you know, trying to get us to just buy into it. And it's all garbage. And it's just a garbage ad revenue generating machine sometimes. And we don't need to, like, just build for that. We can build for each other. And time is pressing. And it's brief. So we can throw all that stuff right out. See. I want to give you something that like nourishes, you know, and to bring hope and beauty into the world. And I imagine a lot of you do too. Like, how do we bring that beauty into the world and really express humanity? You know, we, we wake up, we go to our jobs and we do our work and the task and we argue about Game of Thrones endings and stuff. And we try to like, you know, be good, decent human beings. So when I wake up, the first thing I do is go stand in front of my paintings. Um, and uh, after I fed my cat, you know, oh, I got a cat. <laughs> and, you know, I root around inside and I, I try to find the will and the desire to conjure it up again. And I think of it as like, you know, my peach tree here, it just flowers every spring. And I think our human capacity is to bloom as well because all living things have this blossoming forth. And, you know, a lot of it is that you should actually just be a cog in the machine who's consuming and producing, and that's good, and that's all, but that's not a human life. That's just a machine. You know, we're, we're actually more than that. Whatever that is, I don't know, but there's a sensation of blossoming. And I think that promise and that thing that grows is what, what pushes me forward. So when I stand there in front of the painting, and I try to cut through all those stories, and all those made up things and ideas, and most importantly, the feelings, and again, to the feelings and sensations of it, and sort of push everything else away while absorbing everything. I mean, there's terrible shit going on in the world. So we do our best to just absorb it all. 
So when we go about our, our work, you know, and I go about my work, and it's like we have to feel this, and we have to be this, and we're going to breathe with it and breathe with the whole world that's going on. And then I'm back into it in this next step. And I, I think that approach of following the sensations to find the marvelous and the beautiful is useful no matter what we do. And where, you know, where does it take us? And what do they uncover? And what's our response to the world around us? And I imagine that you in your own lives have similar places where, you know, and practices where you have creative problems and places you're trying to find solutions. You have your jobs, your practices, you know, you have all these puzzles you're trying to figure out. And you're trying to find them and bring them to that, that place, that place that says, you know, fuck yeah. You're like, yes, this is it. This is a blooming. And I imagine that flower at some point is like, fuck yeah, even though it's like a flower saying it. You know, and you're like, I can do this. You know, we can do this. And that's important. That's a really important sensation because there's a lot in the world that's saying you can't actually do it. You can't shine that much. You can't be that beautiful. You can't really do it. You should just kind of keep working. And I think about, you know, what we feel sitting at the base of some ancient tree and it's marvelous and we can be that. Not just the sitting at the tree, but we can be the marvelous tree. And so here's what I do. And David, when he was like, I want you to talk, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about because I don't really get out much. And he's like, I want you to talk about the stoked, the, the fire and keeping the vision lit. And I was like, okay, <laughs> All right, okay. And you know, yet the, the world we live in is kind of indifferent to that. You know, it pushes and it pulls. So here's one place where I begin. And I think that it's helpful and I'm gonna kind of lead you through a little tiny bit sliver of my own momentum and practice in that. Um, we, uh, so I want you to close your eyes for a second. And we're gonna, you know, what you do is you take a problem, and I might take a problem and think about something that I'm working on. I might think about it while I'm driving, but I don't close my eyes then. And I might think about it while I'm just sitting somewhere. You should close your eyes too. Um, and I, I take that problem, just find some problem in your world, some creative problem that you're looking for the solution, you know? And you're not gonna miss anything out there in the world. Daft Punk already played, and the Tool album is later. So close your eyes and you imagine, you visualize, you just hold it there, that problem you're working on somewhere in your body. You know, not just in your head, but you feel it, like in your belly, or your back, or your side, or, you know, wherever. And you see what it feels like, and, you know, where it wants to be held. You ask it what direction it wants to go in and why. And then you extrapolate on that. What's it look like when it goes there? What happens then? What color is it? What flavor it is? You know, what it wants to be. You don't even have to ask, really, because it just kind of shows you it's just sensations. And forget about being liked or, you know, other people liking it. You just ask what's next and what's the most ex beautiful expression of that thing. So when you're ready and you found that most beautiful song of your expression, you can open your eyes and we'll continue onwards. And those that didn't open your eyes, you're cool. You can just keep singing that song. So, you know, when you step out in the world, you aren't going to make the thing that's in your head. Like, I don't make the first painting that could pops in my head because paint doesn't work like that. And the world works against us, and there's stuff happening. We have to work with other people. But what we find is the song and that thread that leads us onwards and that feeling because we want it to shine or sing or whatever it wants to express. And, you know, when I find that, that note, that fuck yeah, that it's leading to, that's what drives me onwards. And that's what you know, keeps pushing me forwards. The goal, I think, is to make all of our work sing, no matter what you're doing. And, and the more people, who I think, who worked from that place, rather than just trying to make money and trying to get likes and hashtag, live my best life, look at me, I think that will actually have a better and healthier culture. Because we're building on human sensations then, and human emotions that are dialoguing with each other because we all feel the same emotions. We all feel the same movements in our bodies and everything because we're sort of limited creatures in that way. 
And that cuts through it, and that cuts through all the stories, and that's the key to really being successful, I think, in our creative endeavors. You know, we're all going to die, and the hope is that the work that we do actually just makes a beautiful world more possible for ourselves while we're here on this planet, and whoever comes next, because that's what we got, you know? It's short-term thinking to let the rainforest burn. So, you know, when you step out in the world, you're not going to make that idea, like I said, uh, oh, that's the wrong slide. Whatever. Anyway, when we find that note, we keep moving forward with it. So sometimes I think of that if we all did that, like I said, we're going to have a, a healthier, more beautiful world. So, you know, to sum up, whoops, to sum up, you know, we try to cut through the stories, cut through all of the, the stuff and the stories of, of your world and your creative endeavors and get through all the ideas and just find the sensations, you know, find the feelings. And that well is so deep, that well is so deep and broad that we're kind of an endless pool of sensations. And that is what keeps driving me forwards. Because every time I look back inside, there's another response to the world. Because, you know, every tree is responding to every drought and every beetle infestation and every great year of rain. We're also like that. We're responding to all of the stuff of the world. And then we just be with it and build from that. And that, I think, is an opening to that as the real source and the real source of creativity. And when you look at someone who's really creative and you know, they've made a lot of work and say, I want to do that, you just keep digging within and just uncover layer upon layer of just responses to the world. You know? And uh, that's it. That's my whole talk. Thanks a bunch. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for being here. Unfortunately, we, we do not have time for any questions. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, one more big hand from Michael Devine.